about you, but growing up, I grew up in a Puerto Rican home. Now, let me tell you things about Puerto Rican parents. They're not very nice. Puerto Rican parents, they don't care if you like them. They always say, you are my child and I'm responsible for you. I don't really know what that means because I don't have kids. But I remember asking my mom and my dad, can I spend the night at my friend's house? You know what the answer always was? Dang, you grew up in my house too. <laughs> no. And I try, I don't know if you ever try to do this with your parents. Then you try to convince your parents on why they should let you do something. Anybody here with me? Only people in this side. That side, only two honest people. You never try to convince your parents to let you do something? I'm a proof that you have. When you wanted a phone and you gave them reasons why you needed a phone and you say, mom, it's just good. You're gonna be, I'm going to be able to call you when I need you. Nobody? How about social media? Like your parents say, you're not getting social media. And you tell them, but everyone has social media. Have you ever said that to a parent? Well, let me tell you about, about a Puerto Rican family. If you say, but everyone spends the night with their friends, do you think that will move the heart of my mom or my dad? You, I, you, either you guys have a camera and experience my childhood. I was 17 years old the first time I did a sleepover. Why are you laughing? This side, it's hurting my feelings. I was 17 years old. Like my parents, it, it did not matter what story I tell them. It did not matter what, who was going to be there or whose kids were going to be there. I was like, Dad, Mom, everyone's going to be there. And, said, and I, I started kind of like being mad at my parents because of it. And low-key, I was kind of like hating my parents. Not really hating them, but I acted like I hate them to try to convince them. But let me tell you, that never worked. Because I was 17 years old the first time I had a sleepover. But I remember going to my mom and my dad and asking them and telling them, but everyone does that. And they would look at me and I would say, but hey, I'm not everybody's parent. I'm your parent. And I'm responsible for you, not the other kids. Now, in the Bible... There is a story where Jesus kind of has a similar conversation with the disciples. We're going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. This is the Sermon on the Mountain, one of the most famous sermons that Jesus spoke. It's about three to four, three chapters in the, in the book of Matthew. And Jesus is teaching his disciples. Now, when I say teaching his disciples, it was not only the 12. There were, yes, the, the 12 disciples were there. But there were other disciples that also followed him and also the crowds. Because wherever Jesus went, crowds followed him. So he is teaching in this mountain and telling these disciples. And he has a conversation with them just like my parents had conversations with me. Because I thought, hey, but this is normal. This is what everyone does. Why are you not letting me do it? Jesus has this, this conversation with his disciples, and I want you to read it with me, okay? Mark, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. You have heard the law that says, here's Jesus telling them, I know what you have heard. I know what everyone is doing. Love your and your enemies. Jesus is telling the disciples, I know what you have heard. Because this is what people say. This is what people do. Love your neighbor, those who you like. How many of you guys know that loving the people that you like is very simple? These people are mean, but they're honest too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How many of you guys know that loving those who hurt you is difficult? Especially if you have siblings or younger siblings, you really understand this. Loving the people that love you, it's very easy. 
And we're going to say what Jesus says about this in a, in a little bit. You have heard, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is what everyone is doing. Verse 44. But I say, love your enemy and pray for those who you. What? Jesus, would you say this again? If I was there, that's what I would be asking. You know, like, excuse me. I just want to make sure I write it down. Because here in North Students, we take notes. So parents, it's not cool here not to take notes. So grab your phone, your journal, whatever you have. Okay? Jesus said, I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Those who talk bad about you. Those who have betrayed you. Those who have done something that is difficult to forgive, he's saying, pray for those, your enemies. Verse 45, in that way, you will be acting as true, what? Of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. He sends rain to the just and the unjust alike. Verse 46, if you love, here's Jesus telling the disciples, going back to what he says in verse 45, if you love those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collector do that much. Now, let me help you understand what is happening. Now, tax collectors... They were not bad people. They were evil people. These were people that were stealing and taxing their own people. It's like if in your house, your mom or your dad or a family member, it's stealing money from you. This is how bad they were. They were taxing, they were stealing from their own people. And Jesus is saying, if you love those who love you, what reward is in that? Even tax collectors do that. The worst of the worst do that. There is no reward on loving those who love you. Verse 47, if you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from every, anyone else? Even pagans do that. Now Jesus is taking it to the extreme. Now these are people who worship other gods. He wants to make his point extremely clear to his disciples and to everyone that is listening, which right now, it's you and me. He wants you and I to understand this. But you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. Here at North Church, one of our standards, and this is what I want you to write down, because it's going to be your sermon in a sentence, even though it's going to be a long sentence today. One of our standards here is that we love people when they least expect it and or least deserve it. This is where this standard comes from. We're not going to love the people that it's easy to love. We will love, we will forgive, we will show mercy and accept all people. People that look like you, and people that don't look like you. People that believe what you believe and people that don't believe what you believe. We're going to love them. We're going to show them mercy and we're going to accept them. Because every person is invaluable and irreplaceable. Jesus is telling his disciples, if you love those who love you, there is no reward on that. And he says, pray for those who persecute you. Now, there are two things that I see, two observations that I see in this scripture that Jesus is asking you and I to do every single day. And as our standard, we're going to love people when they least expect or deserve it. This means that we're not going to love people because they have done something that they deserve our love. Have you ever done that? To your friends? Or to your parents, I'm not going to be nice because they're not nice to me. 
They mistreat me, so I'm going to mistreat them. They're not kind to me, so I have no reason to be kind to them. That is not what the scripture says. The goal of every Christian, of every believer, is to be more like Jesus and less like us. You know what I want to do when somebody says something mean to me? I want to say something back. Most of the time I do, and then I have to repent. Lord, forgive me for doing that. Why are you laughing, babe? My, my wife was laughing. We're called to love people as Christians, as believers. Jesus is calling us. He's asking us to love. To love those who love us and to love those who do not love us. Those who talk about us. Those who persecute us. Those who have intentionally done something to you that hurt you, people that took advantage of you. Now, that's not easy. But if we want to build the kingdom of God here on earth, we have to do the things that Jesus did. We have to love the people that do not deserve to be loved. That when people say something against you and your family, against your race, you love them. Listen, when someone makes a joke about Hispanic people, ooh, I just want to be the ugliest person in the room. But that's not who God called me to be. God called me to love those who don't love me. Because there is no reward on loving those who love me. We are called to love. Can you imagine if Jesus has ex had expectations to love you? Would he die for you? Were you that great for him to die on the cross for? But Jesus loved us when we least deserve or expected. He came and died on a cross for your forgiveness, for my forgiveness. And he exampled this. He showed us to do this. Now, the second thing that I see that Jesus encouraged his disciples, and it's encouraging you, and it's encouraging me, is to pray. Pray for those who persecute you. Now, that is easier said than done. Praying for people who are intentionally trying to go against you and hurt you and talk bad about you is not easy. And I can't imagine when Jesus is telling his disciples, love your enemies. I think of the story of the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, that see the man laying on the ground. And goes and feels the need. In the story, there are two other men that walk by and walk to the other side. The, the ones that were supposed to love them. I think of Jesus dying on a cross because he loved you and I. Then he says, pray for those who persecute you. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, I understand loving people that are a little difficult to love, but people that are intentionally trying to hurt me, why would I do that? But you know what Jesus does on the cross? Jesus is on the cross. People are making fun of him. People are intentionally saying ugly things, like, if you're the son of man... Calm down and save yourself. Jesus could have done it and show them all of, their power, all of his power. But you know what he does? Look at this. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. This is in Luke chapter 23. Matthew chapter 5, the beginning of his ministry Jesus is telling his disciples to love their enemies and to pray for those who persecute them. Then Jesus' last day alive, he is doing just that. He is literally praying for those who nailed him to the cross. And he's not saying, Father, kill them, fire, come send out fire. For no, he says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. 
Jesus gave us a great example of what loving your enemies and praying for those who persecute you. He gives us a great example to follow. And as I say, your goal and my goal as a Christian should be to build his kingdom here. Because he created you on purpose with a purpose for a purpose. The reason why you are in the school that you're in, the family that you're in, it's not by chance. God placed you there on purpose. Because he wants you to build his kingdom wherever you are. The school that you are in, it's not because of the neighborhood that you live in. God chose your family to move into that neighborhood so you can go to that school. Because he has a plan and a purpose for you. The reason why you are in your teams, in the dance group, is not by chance. God placed you there to love people and to pray for people. So my question to you who are you going to love this week? And a lot of times, it's really close to home. And, and loving people looks like praying for them. Now, we're not called to like everyone. We can't like everyone. Some of you guys love me. Some of you guys don't like me. Just like you love people. I mean, you, like, you don't like people, but you're not called to like them. You're called to love them. Which means to do what is right for them. Even if you don't like someone, you can show them love by praying for them. By being kind to them. You don't have to like them. But you have to love them. And loving looks like sacrificing yourself. Sometimes our pride, we want to do what we want to do. I'm glad Jesus didn't do that. Otherwise, we couldn't have the gift of salvation that we have today. And God has placed you where you're at on purpose. And he is asking you and me and you parents to love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. So who are you going to love this week? Maybe it's a family member that you have to show forgiveness. Maybe it's a sibling. Maybe it's a friend who betrayed you, hurt you. Who are you going to pray for this week? I pray that if there is unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart for a specific person, that this week for the next seven days you pray for that person. Because I believe by you praying for that, God can deliver you from unforgiveness. God can deliver you from bitterness. I know that Jesus on that cross, oh, it was not fun to pray for his enemies. But he said, Father, Forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. The people that hurt you, sometimes they don't know what they're doing. And we can show them who Jesus is by the way that we love them. They say something, we don't say something back. We forgive. We show mercy. That's not always fun. You know why? Because we have to sacrifice what we want. We have to... Tell our flesh, no. Tell our pride, no. But I believe that if you love your enemies and you pray for those who persecute you, if you love the people that are difficult to love around you and you pray for those who are difficult to love, I believe your life will be different. I believe that your relationship with your parents, with your siblings, with your family would look different if you love them, if you do what is right for them, if you pray for them, who do you need to pray for this week? Who do you need to love this week? As I read earlier, one of our standards here at North Church is that we will love people 
when they least expect or least deserve it. We don't need a reason to love people, guys. Jesus did not need a reason to love you. So if we're going to be like him, unless we have to put our pride down and forgive, show mercy, and do the things that are not fun. But I believe that when we do that, we're going to start building his kingdom and the environment that you're in will start to change because you're acting like God wants you to act in that place. And his presence will be able to dwell because of you. That's the impact you can make in your school. That's the impact you can make in your house. Would you stand on your feet with me? I know that for some of you, you hear what I'm saying. And you might be thinking, Pastor Christian, you just don't know what so-and-so did to me. And it's been very difficult to forgive. It's been very difficult for me to love them. And maybe I don't understand. But I know one thing. Jesus had a choice on that cross. And he chose to pray for them. Jesus had all authority and could do whatever he wanted. And he decided and chose to humble himself. I know that what has happened to you, what somebody did to you, I might never be able to understand. But you know who does? The one who died on the cross for you. He knows how you feel. And he wants you to be free. I know that what was done to you, it wasn't your fault. And God wants you to live here tonight free. Maybe you're here tonight and it's been hard for you to love people. And you feel like everyone is just against you. You feel like somebody has done something that had hurt you deeply and it's hard for you to love. I believe that tonight you can surrender that to God And you can leave this place different by choosing to love and pray. Those were our main two points tonight. I never have many points. I always have one. But tonight, I wanted to make sure that we understand as a church community, this is not only for you. This is for me. This is for your parents. If we want to build his kingdom here that that's the reason why you and i are here is to build his kingdom we have to love people and we got to pray for them maybe you don't pray it's time to start praying for people simple prayer write it down every single day i want to challenge you for the next seven days write down who do you need to pray for if you don't write it down you're going to forget this is why i ask you to take notes when you're in small group tonight talk about Maybe the person that you need to pray for. Things don't happen just because you wish they would change. I know what will make things change. Loving people and praying for people. Because if you're praying for someone, it might not change your situation, but it will change you. It will definitely change you. I'm going to ask our leaders to be available for prayer. Our worship band is going to lead us in one more song. I don't know how you came in tonight, students. I don't know how you came in tonight, parents. But I know that the presence of God is in this place. And I know that how you came in, you might be here in chains, you might be here in pain, but I know you can live here free because the power of the presence of God is in this place. There's going to be leaders. If you need to pray, if you need to talk to someone about something, this is your time. You don't have to wait for the band. You can just go ahead, get out of your chair, find a leader, ask them to pray with you. Be specific with your prayers. 
I don't like when people to come to me and say things like, I want you to pray with me and have a situation. Don't tell me about you have a situation. Tell me the situation so we can declare the power of God. We can declare healing. We can declare freedom. The enemy wants you to live just like you came in. You can live here free tonight. Father, we come before you. Lord, thank you for your word because it never returns void. Your word, God, it's like a double-edged sword, God. God, that pierces our soul and it goes into all of those areas that we don't even want people to know. God, I pray for leaders as they're praying for students. Lord, I pray for leaders. I pray for parents, God. God, that if there is something or someone that is difficult to love, God, you are our champion. You are the one who gives us victory. You are the one who gave us freedom, Lord. I pray that as leaders are laying hands and praying for students, God, the freedom flows in this place. That your presence flows in this place, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. 